Wells Fargo. Our support of Aggie students goes beyond just banking. By supporting News 22, we're giving back to the community. Wells Fargo. Together, we'll go far. Tonight on News 22. President Trump declares war on the nation's opioid epidemic. An NMSU professor debuts his book on gangs in Texas. An NMSU celebrates the life of a man who broke barriers. All that and more on News 22 Thursday. Serving Southern New Mexico, this is the award-winning KRWG-TV News 22, where news matters. Good evening, everyone. I'm Michael Navarrete. And I'm Selena Madrid. President Trump is publicly declaring a war on the opioid epidemic. Overdose, overdoses of the drug have claimed the lives of hundreds of thousands of Americans in recent years, especially here in New Mexico. This new declaration will reserve money to fight the opioid epidemic. This announcement doesn't quite declare the epi epidemic as a national emergency. If it did, the government would be allowed to use national disaster funds to help fight against the problem. The president announced this yesterday in a speech where he claims the epidemic can be put to an end. We can be the generation that ends the opioid epidemic. We According to the Center for Disease Control and Prevention, more than 140 Americans die every day from an opioid overdose. Despite claims by President Donald Trump that the current opioid epidemic is only a public health emergency, New Mexico Senator Tom Udall feels it should be taken much more seriously. Udall is a co-sponsor of the Combating the Opioid Epidemic Act, which was put in place by Trump. The act is set to invest $45 billion toward prevention, detection, surveillance, and treatment of opioid addiction. Senator Udall will be in Las Cruces on Friday and Saturday. He will take a walking tour downtown to highlight the importance of the Oregon Mountains Desert Peaks National Monument. He'll talk about the positive impact the monument has had on Las Cruces. Also this weekend, Udall will attend the NAACP State Conference on Friday. I know on our way in here, it started to get a little gusty out there. That's right. Andres is next to tell us more with weather. Man, you guys are right as well. I saw those winds right outside. They're actually right now coming from the west at 24 miles per hour. They're going to kick up tonight. The National Weather Service has issued a wind advisory starting Friday morning at 3 a.m. until 9 a.m. But, right, but those winds are keeping us well and dry. Humidity at 20 percent, dew point at 32 degrees, and our barometer sits at 29.91 inches. We did warm up today compared from yesterday. 84, which is a right ab uh, slightly above average for this time of year. Back in the year 1989, we saw a high of 85. And, uh, and back in the 1980, we saw a low of 33. I'll let you know what, when that cold front is going to move in tonight and how low our temperatures are going to get later on. For right now, let's take it back to Selena and Michael on the desk. Members of the NMSU faculty and staff gathered yesterday to honor our criminal justice professor here at New Mexico State University. Mike Tapia released a book this summer called The Barrio Gangs of San Antonio, and it's getting a lot of publicity. The book examines Chicano Street and prison gangs. It was named the most comprehensive academic case study of the Barrio Gangs in Texas. Tapia says it's important for students to be aware of what's going on around them and that more people are involved in gangs than we think. You'd be surprised how many students, you know, from Las Cruces and El Paso in the area know a thing or two about that. So I always draw on their experiences, on their knowledge, and you know, everyone kind of knows someone else who knows something about it. Uh, law enforcement is good to ask about these things, and so I'm having a lot of fun with that. You'd be surprised. You can pick up a copy of the book right here on campus at Barnes & Noble, at the Mesilla Valley Mall, or order it online from Amazon. Here at NMSU, we're celebrating Homecoming Week, and events are underway all over campus. The Alumni Association has set up a big VIP tent next to the Alumni Association building. The VIPs had food and drinks to get ready for the bonfire at fo the football stadium parking lot later this evening. Tomorrow there will be campus tours. The university will hand out a variety of alumni awards on a Saturday and the big event when the Aggies take on the Red Wolves of Arkansas State.
One of NMSU's most famous museum collections is on display again, just in time for homecoming. The collection of fossils, petrified logs, and many other artifacts was donated to the university by Herb and Joan Zuhl in the year 2000. The building since has expanded. The expansion gives a bigger and better place for the collection. I mean, we have Smithsonian quality pieces here and we get to show it to our community who may not have access to these kind of amazing specimens. So it's a nice thing that we can open our museum up to the public and to have them really see these beautiful, awe-inspiring things and then learn some things about our history of our Earth. the expanded room for the Zool collection, there's a kids corner with displays just for the little ones. The museum is at 775 College Drive here on NMSU campus. A 1969 graduate of NMSU is back on campus today for homecoming. Jose Udenga graduated from Carlsbad High School. After leaving NMSU, he got a master's in environmental science at the University of Texas and his law degree at Georgetown University. He practiced environmental law for more than 30 years. He says legal protections of the environment are in trouble. Well, New Mexicans, citizens of all the states, need to be cognizant of these proposed changes as they affect their individual states. And uh, our, our citizenry in New Mexico needs to uh, require their elected representatives to keep their uh, best interests in mind as the state of New Mexico re responds or reacts to pronouncements. Uringa also served as assistant to the Attorney General in the Carter administration. New Mexico's public education secretary said the state will be adopting widely used science standards. This is in response to public outrage over proposed changes that left out references to global warming, evolution, and the Earth's age. In an interview last night, public education secretary Christopher Roskowski said the new standards would replicate the next generation science standards that are used in states across the nation. The final state standards will carry a distinctly New Mexican title, the New Mexican STEM Ready Science Standards. The new standards are scheduled to take effect in July 2018. Student testing under the new guidelines will begin in 2020. The Mars rover may soon be near Mesilla, but not the Mesilla you're thinking of. This Mesilla is the impact crater Endeavor on Mars. The Mars rover opportunity is slowly making its way across the red planet, and new features it discovers are being named after places along the historical El Camino Real. The reason for the naming comes from Larry Crumpler, one of the geologists working on the mission and a research curator at the New Mexico Museum of Natural History and Science in Albuquerque. The rover was landed in Mars in 2004 and has continued to make its way across the planet, exploring craters on its surface. Stay tuned on Dress, we'll be back with your national forecast. And later, learn more about a man and his mother who both broke barriers. More on that when News 22 continues. Las Cruces and El Paso share a lot of history. See why we say Texas history begins in El Paso on our El Paso Gold Heritage Documentary Series, broadcast Sunday nights on KRWG-TV. See legends of El Paso's mountains, gunfights of the Old West, El Paso's Waco tanks, Mexican Revolution sites in El Paso, and many more El Paso TV documentaries on KRWG-TV. Saturday at 12 noon on KRWG-TV. Being a business underwriter of KRWG says something to our viewers, that your business supports comprehensive news, arts programming, and community information. Shows like Masterpiece, Nova, and Charlie Rose inform and entertain the community, and our business underwriters reach our loyal and supportive KRWG viewers. For information on becoming a KRWG underwriter, please call Marcus Royo at 646-5709. And thank you. Welcome back. You're watching News 22 Thursday. Where news matters. While this week is homecoming on the NMSU campus, last weekend was a time to honor a man and his mother who call Las Cruces home. Both mother and son broke down barriers and made a difference in the world. News 22 Stephanie Muniz reports. The NMSU Gospel Choir sang, and local dignitaries were there to celebrate the life of Airman James B. Williams. He was one of the Tuskegee Airmen. 
a group of African-American military pilots who fought in World War II. He was also one of 61 airmen arrested in 1945 for peacefully protesting because they could not attend an officer's club in Indiana. After the war, Williams completed a medical degree and became a surgeon, as well as serving as the physician of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. in Chicago. Dr. Williams is not the only member of the family to make a difference. He was the son of Clarabelle Williams. In 1937, she was the first African American to graduate from New Mexico A&M, which became New Mexico State University in 1960. Claire Bell Williams was a teacher at Booker T. Washington Elementary School and lived a long, full life. One of the reasons why I think she lived 108 years old is that she carried no burden, no hate, no anger. Uh, my father, the same thing. He kept moving forward, uh, not dwelling on the past of anger or fear or dissatisfaction, but keeping on striving forward. And today, Clara Bell Williams Hall at NMSU honors her accomplishments. We can't forget where we've come from and we can't forget what struggles we have laid to, that lay ahead of us to continue to make NMSU better, to continue to make Las Cruces better, New Mexico better, the United States better. Um, and I think some of those things are were started by my father and my grandmother, but the burden is on us and the generations that follow to continue the struggle. James B. Williams Jr. says that Clarabelle Williams and her son James have shown how to overcome obstacles and make a difference. Stephanie Muniz, News 22. Gallup, New Mexico will now have its own veteran cemetery in by 2019, thanks to funding. Governor Susana Martinez and officials gathered during the weekend to mark the dedication of the proposed cemetery. The Gallup Cemetery will serve veterans of McKinley and Cibola counties to ensure they will have a final resting place closer to home. There are also future plans for cemeteries in Angel Fire, Carlsbad, and one in Fort Stanton that will open later this year. New Mexico drivers can now get license plates featuring the state's official fish, the Rio Grande Cutthroat Trout. A portion of the plate and renewal fees will go to the state's share with the wildlife program, which helps pay for research, habitat improvements, and rehabilitation programs. And the weather is starting to get cold here in Las Cruces. It's a little chilly, I know. And to show us what the rest of the nation is looking like, here's Andres Valle. Whether the weather is good, whether the weather is bad, you should always wear a sweater with a hood. A colleague of mine named Nolan Fox gave me that little nice little tease while we were do while I was prepping for the show. And, now, and that's going to be right for tonight. You can see this cold front on your map right here. You can see it really dip down into the central part of the United States. But as that front moves on, temperatures will rise. Our next map, but what is that? Is going to show is going to show us what that's going to do for us here in the borderland. We, like I said, that front's going to start to move in tonight. The National Weather Service has issued a wind advisory beginning at 3 a.m. Friday all the way until 9 a.m. So winds are going to pick up on the western slopes of town. So if you're driving through the Anthony Gap or Trans Mountain or even near the Oregon Mountains, I would stay, I would say give you guys a lot of caution and drive safe out there. Temperatures are going to dip down almost by 20 degrees for your highs for tomorrow. And is that going to change? Yes, it is. The next map can show you that as this trough is going to move more eastward, high pressure does return into our region, and that's what's going to kick up our temperatures by your Sunday into Monday. We are going to see another system move into our area. I'll let you know if that's going to bring in rain in your five-day forecast. I'll give you the numbers for tonight and for the rest of the and for tomorrow after the break. The Doña Ana Arts Council, presenting the Renaissance Arts Fair, Magicians, Jousters, Arts and Crafts, Food and Games, Saturday and Sunday, November 4th and 5th at Young Park in Las Cruces. The Renaissance Arts Fair is New Mexico true. Get ready for a musical theater landmark. America's original modern family comes of age in Lincoln Center Theater's sparkling production. Tiny band. Welcome to Falsetto Land. Falsettos. Friday at 8.30 p.m. on KRWG-TV. Next time on A Chef's Life. I love sunchokes, but they are a pain in the rear to clean. They're impossible to clean. Impossible. So we just go through one by one. So you've got to pull them out. Oh, wow. So yeah, they're really attached. 
So today is the annual manners class. Oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. Bad manners. <laughs> Saturday morning at 10 on KRWG TV. Welcome back to News 22, folks. We're going to take a look at your current temperatures across the state of New Mexico. And right now we're looking at Farmington at 63 degrees, Santa Fe at 56, Albuquerque at 69, 60 in Clovis, 64 in Rodoso, 75 in Deming, and 73 here in the city of the Crosses. Our highs for tomorrow, they're not going to warm up as much. Again, that 20 degree drop because of that front. 48 in Santa Fe, 49 in Rodoso. They might see a slight flurries for tonight. We don't know just yet. I'll keep you posted on my Twitter page. 55 in Roswell, 65 in Deming, and 61 in Las Cruces. For tonight, like I said, that wind is going to pick up. Alamogordo, 45, your expected low. Warming up to just a mild 58. And TRC, 46 is your expected low. 61 for your expected high. Silver City, 43 for tonight, 59, your expected high for tomorrow. Here in the City of the Crosses, again, that wind advisory is in effect. 47 degrees for tonight, a high of 61. I'll let you know when our next system is and if we're going to see that rain. Models are showing yes or no in your five-day forecast with a weekend always in view. A fire in Colorado has destroyed multiple acres of land. That's the first story in tonight's Southwest Minute. A wildfire scorched eight acres in Colorado Springs this morning. Firefighters were able to take care of the fire within an hour. Some residents were told to be ready to evacuate, but that order was later lifted. The fire's cause is under investigation. A truck driver is dead after his 18-wheeler slammed into a Texas restaurant near Houston this morning. Authorities say the truck drove across a median, hit two other vehicles, and crashed into the restaurant. Emergency responders suspect the driver suffered a medical problem. Three other people suffered minor injuries. Eight prototypes for President Trump's border wall debuted today at a border crossing in California. Four companies spent the past month constructing the walls out of concrete and steel that stand between 18 and 30 feet high. The prototypes will be tested over the next three months. Congress has not authorized any money to build the wall. For the Southwest Minute, I am Marlene Barraza. Homecoming is this week, and I am so excited for the parade and everything that comes with it. I know that's all the good stuff, too, but we have the game tomorrow on Saturday. Or it's on Saturday, I guess, not tomorrow. But we have Ambron Ramos here to talk about sports. Thanks, guys. Coming up in sports, get a recap of last night's Thriller World Series game. News 22 Sports is next. Up on Austin City Limits. I can't stand when you tell me to get back. We are free. Why does it seem we can't just be? Stop your crying, you sort of. Shut, kiss me, hold me tight. Shut, kiss me, hold me tight. Saturday at 9 p.m. on KRWG TV. What does it mean to be an essential oil? Essential oils come from plants. It's amazing how a few oils can produce so many different outcomes. The imagination can go wild, and if you can follow that, it's, it's just endless. You can teach so much through this thing called soap. Saturday morning at 9.30 on KRWG TV. This is KRWG-TV News 22 Sports. Welcome back. I'm our brand Sweet Sugar Ramos, and let's talk sports. The World Series is tied after two games as the teams shift from Los Angeles to Houston this weekend. Last night's game was a thriller. We'll pick it up in the ninth inning with the Dodgers leading 3-2. to two. Marvin Gonzalez is going to take Ken Lee Jansen deep to tie the score. So we go to extras. And Jose Altuve and Carlos Correa go back to back to put the Astros in front, five to three. Bottom 10th, Yasiel Puig hits one out to left to make it a one run game. Then Kike Hernandez ties the score at five with an RBI single. So we go to the 11th, tied at five. In the top of the 11th, George Springer puts the Astros in front, seven to five. 
and that would be your final. Whoo, that game gets me excited. The two teams hit a combined eight home runs in game two, which is a World Series record. Games three, four, and five will be this weekend in Houston. And Cristal Corrales caught up with a few local fans. Here's what they had to say. After last night's game, both Astros and Dodgers fans here in the city of Las Cruces have a World Series message to give to their team. If the Astros were to win the World Series, it'd be pretty special. If the Dodgers won the World Series, I'd be happy because I've been waiting 20 years for this. If the Astros won the World Series, I think for me it'd just be more sentimental. Well, if the Dodgers won the World Series, that's going to mean a lot to me because I've never seen it. Uh, last night was the first World Series win they ever had. They've been once before, but they never won a game. So it'd be a pretty big deal for me. Uh, I grew up in L.A., so my dad, just every night we'd be watching the games on, on the regular cable and go out to the stadium and stuff. And it's just something I've always, that's just a team I fell in love with growing up. After Hurricane Harvey and everything hit, I think it'd be really um, moving, I guess, a uh, uh, good positive feedback for the city after all the disaster stuff that happened. Growing up, it was a dream to be a Dodgers player, still is, and just always fueled me to be a baseball player. Let's go Astros. <laughs> Let's go. Kick the Dodgers butt. Go Dodgers. All right. The New Mexico State football team has a tough task ahead of them this weekend when they host Arkansas State. The Aggies have already won three games this season, which is as many as they won all of last year. For quarterback Tyler Rogers, winning games has translated into a winning mentality. Uh, we have a confidence that, you know, wasn't here before that, you know, we expect to go out every week and, and play good football and, and get a win. And uh, I think that's important to have on a team, you know, just to have that belief beforehand, so definitely. The game will start at 6 on Saturday. There will be a tailgate beforehand on the field to the east of Aggie Memorial Stadium. We have another exciting weekend in high school football. Las Cruces High and Oñate will be facing off Friday night at 7 at the Field of Dreams. Then on Saturday, Mayfield will be taking on Hobbs at 1, which will also be at the Field of Dreams. Centennial has a bye week, but will be back next week to take on Oñate. The New Mexico State cross country team is getting set to host the 2017 WAC Championship on Saturday. In the pre-championship coaches poll, the Aggies men are pe pegged to finish in a tie for third with Grand Canyon University. On the women's side, they are projected to take first place. The meet will take place at the NMSU golf course with the men's 8K starting at 9 a.m. followed by the women's 5K at 10 a.m. And that's all for sports tonight. Join us for more sports action tomorrow. Still ahead on News 22, Andres will be back to take a look at your five-day forecast. But first, does anyone object to a wedding? While well, baby hippo Fiona doesn't, more on that when News 22 returns. So when you look at labels, you have to be careful of what the label says. Um, you have to look at the number of servings. A lot of times you'll say, well, this doesn't have that many calories. But yet when you actually look at the label, it's eight servings and not just one serving. Sunday at 5 p.m. on KRWG. Mr. Peace. Look me in the eyes and tell me you don't love me. Why do you suppose this has anything to do with the heart? Dwight, what's happened to my husband? After him! If Drake Khan hangs, the people will rise up and I will be powerless to stop them. Hold Dark on Masterpiece. Sunday at 8 p.m. on KRWG TV. Let's take a look at our top stories. President Donald Trump is vowing to fight against the nation's opioid epidemic. And New Mexico senators were not quiet about the subject. An NMSU professor debuted, debuted his book on gangs in San Antonio. He plans to write a book on the same subject, but focusing it on gangs in Las Cruces. And a man with a familiar name was with a familiar name was honored for his courage during his time as a Tuskegee Airman during World War II. It's not often that you are photobombed by a baby hippo, but this is not the case for a newly engaged couple. The Cincinnati Zoo's little hippo can't seem to stay out of the spotlight since her, since her birth, especially out of people's engagement photos. Nick Kelby proposed to his girlfriend Haley Roll in front of the hippo exhibit where Fiona the hippo photobombed their engagement photo. 
The, color, the couple are Fiona fans and were thrilled that she could be a part of their memorable day. And we've got Andres on the desk with us here to take a look at our five day forecast. It seems like we're gonna see a roller coaster of temperatures coming this week. And that's because we have a strong cold front moving in tonight. Look at that, a 20 degree drop for tomorrow, 61. Look at that overnight low though, 37 degrees. It's time to bring out those winter boots, bring out the scarves, start feeling more like fall before we rebound again for your Sunday. And then Monday, we start to warm up above average before Halloween where it's time to layer up once again. If you have kids out there, bring them, give them a jacket because we do have a 10% chance of rain. I'll give you guys some more updates on that because models are iffy on if that is going to bring in some yeah, rain here. Cross our fingers for no rain on Halloween. That would. I don't know. Would really I think it's going to make it more festive yeah. if we are. <laughs> make it a little spooky. A little spooky. <laughs> it's spooky season. Yeah, it's looking nice. I know we have the parade this weekend, so it's going to be a nice weekend. And you can catch all today's aired stories and our past newscasts on our YouTube page at youtube.com forward slash KRWG News 22. And follow us on Twitter and Instagram for show updates and the latest on what the News 22 team is up to. And that's all we got tonight for News 22 Thursday. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining us. Tune in next week as we take a look at news from across the borderland. I'm Michael Navarrete. I'm Selena Madrid. I'm Andres Valle. Have, Have a good a night. Good night. Español is brought to you by Noticias 22, Spanish language news for Southern New Mexico and West Texas. Noticias 22. Hola, ¿qué tal? Los saluda Raquel López en este breve informativo de Noticias 22. El presidente Donald Trump declaró la crisis de opioides una emergencia de salud pública nacional hoy por la tarde. El presidente dijo que más de 2 millones de estadounidenses ha dependido de las analgésicos y la heroína. Según la encuesta reciente de la Administración de Abuso de Sustancias y Servicios de Salud Mental, se determinó que punto 5 millones de americanos mayores de 12 años usaron píldoras con receta en el 2016. El análisis reciente publicado por la revista de la Asociación Médica Americana dice que analgésicos prescritos e ilegales tales como la heroína están acortando la esperanza de la vida americana. Como el número gubernamental más reciente muestran sobredosis fatales relacionados con la heroína, han disminuido 533% entre 2002 y 2016. Hoy en la frontera de California, cerca de la mesa de Ote, el, gober el gobierno federal de los Estados Unidos prentó por primera vez varios prototipos del nuevo muro que se propone para la frontera entre Estados Unidos y México. Cuatro compañías fueron elegidas para construir sus versiones de muro construidos de cemento y hierro. Los ejemplares miden de 18 a 30 pies de altura. Oficiales federales tendrán tres meses para aprobar cada ejemplar. Cualquier compañía podría escoger esto para la construcción que ninguno tendrá escogida. Para Noticias 22, Raquel López. Local support for a portion of today's programming is provided by... Wells Fargo, our support of Aggie students goes beyond just banking. By supporting News 22, we're giving back to the community. Wells Fargo, together we'll go far.